It's Tuesday the 5th of April and this is your Bobby's TV News Update. So glad you could join us. We begin with news of concern from top officials of the Child Care Board about a worrying number of adults still living at the Nightingale's Children's Home in Black Rock. The board's deputy chairman, Dr. Carol Jacobs, told Monday's launch of the island's first ever Child Abuse Awareness Month that it's a matter which needs urgent attention. I have several people in their 30s in the Nightingale home with children. And that is, that is really a major concern for us at Child Care Board. And there doesn't seem to be anywhere currently where, where they can go for, for management and care. So I just wanted to put that on the table. Minister of People Empowerment and Elder Affairs Kurt Humphrey is equally concerned about the matter. And he made clear Barbados must make better provisions for people with disabilities. He says discussions are ongoing to find a suitable location to address the issue. We were discussing the possibility of using the facility at Sterling for different things. Um, but to build out a facility to be able to help us accommodate um, persons, adults with disabilities. Um, so that so that we wouldn't have the situation that we also found ourselves in when we found two relatively young um, persons with disabilities living on the street. And, um, you know, it's regrettable that there is almost a direct relationship in Barbados between a disability and poverty, between a disability and abuse, between some form of disability, whether it be physical or mental, and homelessness. It's staggering. And it is unfortunate, it is not something that we should be proud of. But I think we have to name it, shame it, and fix it, you know. Relief is on the way for operators of public service vehicles and taxis who have been pressing government to shield their businesses from spiraling fuel costs. Energy Minister Kerry Simmons says Deputy Prime Minister Sandia Bradshaw held talks with key players as recently as last week and he's optimistic they are nearing a solution. We had a report on the matter given to us uh, at Cabinet on Thursday. We are in the process of, of concluding the discussions with the taxi and PSV operators and we will in, uh, very shortly form a compact between government and those operators with a view to uh, making sure that there's a commonality of purpose on the way forward. I don't want to get into the specifics of that compact yet because that really would be a little bit premature. It has to be finally approved by cabinet. Um, <clears throat> but just sit tight. We are, we are working on it actively. Another news this Tuesday, the Barbados Association of Retailers, Vendors and Entrepreneurs, Barven, is condemning the sale of illegally acquired sugar cane and has called for the full weight of the law to be brought down on anyone found engaging in the practice. President Alistair Alexander made his association's position clear on the heels of complaints by Chairman of the Barbados Sugar Industry Limited, Patrick Bethel, that people were stealing sugar cane. While it is well known that Barven is in full support of vendors. Barvin is in full opposition to all those who are involved in the selling of produce obtained through predial arsony. Predial arsony is a threat to national security. That's how Barvin views predial arsony. Food security is a vital part of national security and crop thieves are a threat to that security. Barvin therefore has no sympathies at all for those who are selling cane that has been illegally obtained, those who are, may have may be involved in, in such activity. Barvin has no sympathy at all for such persons and we are advising law, law enforcement to move swiftly against such activity and shut it down once and for all. A call for motorists to share roads safely with cyclists is coming from the Vice President of the Barbados Cycling Union, Livingston Headley. Speaking to reporters at the first annual memorial ride in honor of cyclists who died on the island's roads, particularly last year, Headley said cyclists need fair access to the road to conduct their training for overseas meets. It's, it's difficult for us, especially in the Barbados Cycling Union, where we go overseas to compete. We actually need more than a bike lane to, to do training on, because the bike lane is not going to cover the whole island. We need more distance to, to put in our, our training. Um, we have started back training at the National Stadium, but that's only for track riders. 
So we still need a facility where we can uh, use the roads in Barbados because all of our races on the road um, can't be done in a bike lane. It's, it's too, it will be too small. But it, can, it will be helpful for the, the, um, the recreational rider who you know, who's just out there for a little exercise to have some bike lanes where I'm not 100% sure where that where those would be. Because it, it would be a cost involved and I'm not sure how expensive it would be to have bike lanes at this point in time. There's regional and international news after this short break. More oxygen means more energy means more adventure. Cure Oxygen natural spring water infused with more oxygen to improve your energy, immunity and performance. The next generation of hydration. Cure Oxygen, nature's ultimate water. Caribbean Cool is a refreshing juice drink that contains 100% vitamin C that you can enjoy any time of the day. It has a refreshingly awesome range of Caribbean flavors. Morby, orange, fruit punch, pineapple, sorrel, and pineapple coconut. Suitable for any occasion. Caribbean Cool. To regional happenings in Guyana. The Speaker of the House wants the PNC to fill its vacant seats in Parliament more than two months after the Leader of the Opposition, Joseph Harmon, resigned, followed by Nicolette Henry. Former President David Granger is yet to respond to a formal request for the party to name two new MPs. We get the details from Newsroom Guyana. Speaker of the National Assembly Manzun Odir on Monday said he's ready to have the two vacancies on the opposition side of the House filled as early as the next sitting of the National Assembly. But that will depend on how quickly the APNU AFC coalition submits those names to the Speaker. Nadir could not say on Monday when the next sitting of the National Assembly would be, but confirmed that he has written to former President David Granger as the representative of the list, notifying him of the vacancies. Granger has not yet responded and Nadir has made it clear that regardless of how long it takes, that is not his concern. As far as I know, and I'm learning that names have already been proposed in the press, but I can't work on the press. so. That is the process it is, and I don't know when Parliament will reconvene. If names reach to me before the next sitting of Parliament, those persons will be sworn in. Nicolette Henry resigned as an APNU AFC parliamentarian on February 3rd, 2022, but it took effect on March 31. Meanwhile, Joseph Harmon first resigned as opposition leader on January 26, 2022, under immense pressure to do so, and later as a member of parliament with that resignation taking effect on March 15. The newsroom understands that with the two vacancies to be filled by the People's National Congress Reform, PNCR, the largest party in the APNU AFC coalition, Two names have already been sent to Granger as the persons to fill the vacancies. A usually reliable source said the two persons are PNCR leader Aubrey Norton and long-standing member and former health minister Waldo Lawrence. On the international scene, humanity has less than three years to halt the rise of planet-warming carbon pollution. That's according to UN climate experts. They are warned on Monday, with any delay to peak greenhouse gas emissions, it will likely result in smashing through warming targets. It's now or never to save the planet. According to the third and final section of a climate report published Monday by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, humanity has less than three years to stop the rise of global CO2 emissions that warm Earth, and less than a decade to cut them almost in half. Measures it is underwater, unprecedented heat waves, terrifying storms, widespread water shortages, the extinction of a million species of plants and animals, and this is not fiction or exaggeration. It is what science tells us will result from our current energy policies. The Secretary General also criticized world leaders for failing to stick to their promises to bring world temperatures down, calling previous climate summits a file of shame. The UN body also gave guidance on what the world can and must do to stave off the worst for the future. Firstly, keeping the rise in temperatures at or under 1.5 degrees Celsius this century, requiring a massive effort by businesses, governments and industries to make severe changes. If the Earth is to stay within 1.5 degrees Celsius, they found coal must be effectively phased out and methane emissions reduced by a third and higher investment towards a low-carbon shift. 
Limiting temperatures also means carbon emissions must peak by 2025 and fall rapidly after that to give the planet a chance. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.